Today I want to talk about the highlight and shadow display feature in the Pen F and how to get better exposures with that in combination with the exposure compensation dial. Now I'm going to make a couple of assumptions that you're already shooting in RAW and that you're using some sort of post-processing software such as Lightroom or Capture One. If you're shooting in JPEG, you'll still be able to take advantage of these features. However, once you take the picture, uh, you're going to be pretty limited once you get into post-processing in terms of trying to recover shadows and highlights. So what kind of pictures can the shadow and highlight display feature help you with? Uh, one good example is like the one behind me, um, you know, a sunset in the mountains where you're going to have, you know, a very bright sun and you're going to have some harsh shadows down here in the rocks and then you're going to have the sky. And what you're trying to do is capture all of that color information and light information within the camera's ability to capture or dynamic range. Now, if you look at DxO Mark, uh, they'll tell you that the Pen F has about 12 stops of dynamic range. They'll tell you maybe this Nikon has about 14 stops of dynamic range. And this scene here is probably 20, 30 stops of dynamic range. However, um, you have to take those numbers with a grain of salt because cameras actually only capture effectively about seven stops of dynamic range, um, which, you know, is they call, I think, exposure latitude. And what that means is, is within those seven stops, you're going to get a lot of detail and information, you know, color, uh, saturation and different levels of light but or different gradations of light but once you start going beyond that eight stops nine stops you know 12 stops 14 stops you're going to hit a bumper and that's that's where your pictures or images start to clip and when you try to bring the highlights in you'll find that all the colors gone out of the sky and you know what was should have been blue or yellow is just white or maybe you're trying to bring up the shadows and what should be a nice, you know, yellow brown uh, turns into just mush with grain and color noise and no detail at all. So when you take a picture, you really want to try to stay away from the limits of the camera and the highlight shadow feature in the Pen F, you can tweak it to help you do that. So let's go into the camera settings and show you where you can tweak the highlight and shadow feature. So I'm going to turn on the camera and I have a little test scene here with my Olympus uh, and a color chart. First thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and go out to shooting menu one and just do a full factory reset. Okay, that way I know uh, nothing else is going to be affecting these images. And then the only other setting we need to go into or menu item is the display menu. And in here, you want to go down to the info settings and go into the live view. And I'm going to turn off image only and I'm going to turn off custom to but in custom one, I'm going to keep the histogram and I'm going to turn on highlight and shadow. Okay. And that's it. And we go back out. And now the other setting we need to adjust are the histogram settings. And what you'll see here are two numbers, 255 for the highlight and zero for the shadow. And you can adjust these down on the highlight side down to 245 and on the shadow side you can bump this all the way up to 10. There so let's let's talk about that for a second. Basically what you're telling the camera is to show you highlights um, clipped whenever they go over a value of 245 and to show you shadows clipped to black whenever they hit a value of 10 or less. And if you look at a histogram, for example, you know, the one end being zero on the left side being all your blacks and then your whites all the way on the other end at 255. So if you're taking a picture and everything is 255, you should have a completely white picture 
And then if you take another picture and everything is registered as zero or completely black, um, you're not going to have any detail in either one. And what you want to do is, like I said earlier, is try to stay away from those edges of the dynamic range. You want to stay within that seven stops. So setting this to 245 and 10 will help you do that. Okay, now I'm just going to make a couple other quick changes. I'm going to set my camera to ISO 200. I don't care about white balance. I'm going to change my image file to RAW. And then I'm going to go over to uh, sRGB, change that to Adobe so I get a wider color gamut. And everything else is fine. Okay, now there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, trying to expand the dynamic range of the camera. For example, they tell you to set the uh, picture profile to muted or maybe they'll tell you to adjust the contrast and sharpness or color saturation, you know, uh, so the camera doesn't do any processing of the image. But all of these settings, whether you set it to vivid or monochrome, all of these settings only affect the JPEG file. Uh, the raw file is virtually untouched. And, you know, if you, even if you set this camera to monochrome and you take a picture, when you import that raw file into Lightroom, it's going to be in full color. There's not going to be any lost information at all. So the only setting really in the camera that affects the raw file is the ISO because that is an artificial gain. And as you know, the higher the ISO you go, the lower your image quality. So everything else in that in this camera or any camera for that matter, usually it only affects the JPEG files. So that being said, um, let's um, let's take a couple of pictures. OK, now, as you remember, in the menu setting, I set the uh, histogram settings to 245 and 10 and to activate the highlight and shadow, uh, it's toggled by the info button now. Remember, we set the info live view. And as soon as I hit that, you'll notice right away that the whites here, which could represent, for example, a cloud, have been, have, are turning red, you know. And what the camera's saying is that it's not getting any information out of this area anymore. It's been clipped completely to white. That would normally be the case if we hadn't already changed the histogram settings to say, no, don't clip at 255, clip at 245. So when I'm looking at this, I know that I probably have not clipped the whites, but to see where I'm at exactly, I'm going to adjust the exposure compensation dial and just go a little bit darker. So we'll do minus a third of a stop. and bang, there you go. You see that now there's nothing in red except maybe these little letters in the Olympus. But now I know I'm capturing virtually all of the information in this white area. So for example, if this were a cloud, there may be some very subtle hints or hues in that cloud of color that would have been lost otherwise. But by adjusting the exposure compensation, I can now capture hopefully most of that color. I can even go a little step further down another stop, or I'm sorry, a third of a stop. Now I'm probably capturing even more information uh, in that white area. So now maybe I'm ca capturing very subtle shades in the cloud and being able to see the textures of the cloud. And if I look in the shadow area, all of a sudden now there's a hint of blue uh, coming up inside the middle of this lens and what that's telling me is that now the camera thinks it's clipping Or reporting all black in these areas and if I tried to recover that You know, I'd probably get a lot of noise and grain or I wouldn't cover anything at all. It would just stay black However, since we set the shadow setting to plus 10 I know I'm not even close to the limits of the camera. I'm, I'm just barely touching it Um and this, this would be probably, if, if it was this picture here, and I wanted to capture sort of the beauty of the sky, I would probably set the Olympus to minus two thirds of a stop, or minus 0.7 in this case, to capture 
you know, the, the beautiful sky, but also knowing that I can probably recover most of the shadows in the foreground without getting too much noise and grain. Let's go down one more stop. Now you can see there's a lot more area in the blue being uh, highlighted and in the whites and other colors here, I'm probably capturing even more information. And you can kind of tell from the histogram. I mean, it's so tiny, it's hard to see what's going on. But anytime the histogram touches the top of the chart here, that means it's capturing the maximum number of pixels and data that it, the camera's capable of in a single shot. Um, so there's a lot of lot of colors in here that are probably touching, you know, and I'm getting the maximum information for. So that means that when I um, bring this picture into post-processing in Lightroom, I'm going to have a lot of beautiful colors uh, in the sky and the shadows I should still be able to recover because again, I did set that to plus 10. So let's take a picture here at minus one because I still feel pretty comfortable even with more of this blue being highlighted, but it, down here in the body, there's almost no blue at all. So I should be able to recover that without too much noise or grain. Okay, now let's say, let's go back to zero. Let's say that I actually the sky might be kind of bland that day or it's just a hazy yellow and I'm not too worried about getting all of the various colors but the foreground is actually very beautiful maybe it's a nice fall day and there's a lot of colors down here and you really want to capture the colors and and tones that are in the foreground or in the shaded areas and but you don't want to blow out the highlights you still want to have a little yellow or the little bit of color that's there anyway so what you can do is you can add um, a third of a stop and you'll see how this is now almost fully engulfed this white area. So what that's saying is anything that's white on here has probably been clipped, but because I set the uh, histogram highlight area to 245, I really probably haven't clipped it. I definitely haven't clipped any of the yellow. Um, so if it is kind of a cloudy, hazy day with a little bit of yellow, um, I'll be able to recover that in post-processing while at the same time uh, bringing up the shadows and details with the maximum number of uh, 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 color information possible with less grain and noise. Um, actually, I probably feel pretty comfortable going another third of a stop and I still haven't clipped this yellow yet. So let's go up another third. And basically, you know, the higher I go, the more information I'm going to capture in the shadow area and the more detail and the less noise. And what you can see now that I'm at a full plus one stop, the yellow is finally clipped. And again, because I set the highlight area to 245, I'm probably right at that number and still have, you know, up to 255, you know, 10 digits worth of information. Uh, in the file that I'll be able to recover. So there'll still be, if there's different hues of yellow, different textures, different shades, it's still there. And for this, this kind of picture where I want to capture more of the uh, shadow area, this is probably where I would stop with the exposure compensation. Because if I go even more, you know, I'll probably be clipping even more. But let's take a picture at one stop. Okay. And we'll go back, go back to zero. And that's basically it. It's pretty simple, but you know, if you don't change the settings in the histogram, the only time this highlight and shadow thing is gonna show you is when it's actually already clipped and, and it's too late at that time. And this will also help you make decisions uh, creatively in terms of, do you want more of the foreground or do you want, um, more of the highlights in the picture to come through. You know, a lot of times the foreground, there's a person there and you want to bring that out more, you know, to a point that uh, you want to raise the exposure 
but you don't want to lose everything in the highlights if you can help it. And that's where this highlight and shadow and adjusting the histogram settings really help you uh, navigate that sort of uh, dynamic range in a way that when you bring it back into post-processing, you can feel pretty comfortable that you'll be able to recover those. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, hit the like button below. That would really mean a lot to me. And uh, I'm going to try and do more videos on how to get more out of the Pen F and some other photographing techniques. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. All right. Thank you.